Some have simply said, computers did it. And yet, information technology has transformed almost every job, increasing employers' needs for workers with advanced skills and college credentials. But that story is only half of the truth. A study by Golden and Cass indicates that rising demand for an educated workforce is not a new phenomenon. What is new is that back then, the supply of college graduates outpaced demand during most of the 20th century. When I went to college in the 1970s, this country produced enough graduates to satisfy needs. Then around 1970, something changed. High school graduation rates flattened to near 70 percent, where they remained steady. College attendance continued to grow, but the college completion rate, the percentage of current and bachelor's degree, stagnated for more than a decade. Again, why do we need Texas Southern and other HBCUs? We all know that the return of investment of a college education is still very high. Golden and I both wish that Americans remembered and appreciated the achievement represented by the universal high school movement of the early 20th century. Quoting her, it was a very good way of making sure that the resources of this country would be used effectively. And in the 1970s, European countries criticized our system of higher education for wasting money by educating so many students from low income and urban environments. But that system, one in which I received an opportunity to attend almost any college, enables just about any child to have a chance at a better life through gainful employment in corporate America. I would remind everyone that higher education in America is still the best system in the world. However, we have been warned over and over again that we are losing our standards and foreign countries are making a move to outpace the U.S. And in some cases, they have already succeeded in math and science. Again, we are asked, what is the relevance of Texas Southern University and other HBCUs? We are part of the answer to this nation reclaiming its economic edge in a truly global economy. From a commentary in USA Today, the view of that newspaper is represented in the very catchy title, Higher Education Slum. International measures find U.S. losing its long-standing advantage. Basically, the article starts with an introduction of the U.S. gold medal basketball team that was once called the Dream Team until they lost. Now, this year's team is called the Redeem Team. And the article indicates that something similar is playing out in higher education, where for decades the quality of U.S. universities led the field, making America the world's best educated population. The article goes on to say that this country is slipping backward, threatening America's ability to compete in the global economy that demands skilled workers. From an article in USA Today, we know that our country is not faring well at all in the race for an educated workforce. Quote, for today's younger U.S. workers, ages 25 to 34, they rank just 10th among 30 commonly compared democracies in earning associate degrees and above. And while two-thirds of high school graduates now go on to college, only one half end up with degrees, giving us, the U.S., a survival rate that ranks with Mexico. Let's face facts. One obvious impediment today to obtaining a college education is affordability. Since the early 1980s, the median family income has increased by 127%, while college tuition and fees have risen 375%. At Texas Southern, affordability is a major concern because 93% of our students depend on some form of federal, state, or local financial aid. That is why raising money for scholarships is among my highest fundraising, fundraising priorities. Why do we need Texas Southern University and other HBCUs? My response is better raised in America as well. In the July issue of the Quantum Higher Education, in an article entitled Thinking in Black and White, another Harvard scholar, Mazarin Manaji, developed a series of tests called Implicit Association Tests that claim to reveal a person's hidden bias, attitudes, and beliefs. More than 
3 million people have taken her test on her research website. But more interesting is her story of a very liberal lawyer and her five-year-old son. He found some gum on a New York subway wall and put it in his mouth. And she said, how could you do that? That gum was in somebody else's mouth. And he said, spitting it out, yes, it could have been in the mouth of a black person. She was just horrified. A child is not born into this world thinking black is bad and white is good. But Dr. Bernardi said, I guess I hadn't thought about just how prepared ladies are to learn this stuff or how fast they can learn it. She therefore revised her bias test for children ages 5 and 6, expecting to see that young children would show no bias. To her surprise, she found that bias were strong early and at the same magnitude as adults. She concluded that we think that bias has to do with cultural privilege. Very early, black kids know that their group isn't good. When we talk about how to change our society, she gives an enormous amount of weight to simple awareness. Once the awareness is there, there are a million paths to change our lives. She says we can do it, but the question is, will we? Emotions aside, do we need black houses? The answer is a resounding yes. And furthermore, we need more college period. <laughs> we need more college to redeem our commitment to allow each American child, whether in an urban or rural environment, a chance to earn a college degree and beyond. My vision for Texas Southern is not simply to become a better Texas Southern than we were yesterday. We want to grow and improve as an institution but any institution that uses itself as a yardstick for measuring change is in danger of being too insular and narrowly focused. Yes, we want to be a better Texas Southern, but simply being a better Texas Southern is not enough. My vision for Texas Southern is not simply to become the best HBCU in the nation. We would be, we would be proud of that distinction, but becoming the best HBCU is not enough. And if that be the case, we are shortchanging ourselves as an institution if we do not set our goals as high as possible to become one of the best public, urban serving institutions of higher education in the nation. <laughs> to become a university with effective global, regional, national, and international influence and impact on the lives of people. I hope that you understand that we are in this effort together. I cannot do this work alone. You must help me, and I must help you. And we must be in total agreement on changing today's Texas Southern, and it will be a clash of the old and the new. Coach and I were discussing the newspaper article last Saturday about Texas Southern University's new president, who apparently is walking a tight wire. Coach reminded me of a paper I wrote in 1972 about the TM framework. Traditional versus modern, a sociological construct that could be used by U.S. businesses who were the first wave of companies establishing corporations in India and Asia and Africa and other parts of the, what was then called, third world. In short, the TM framework allows for an evaluation of a person or country based upon the table of beliefs and human qualities. Certain characteristics were considered traditional, for example, a strong belief in religion and opposing characteristics were considered modern, such as the belief in modern medicine and science and technology. I turn the environment into an assessment of African Americans as a subculture within the dominant Judeo-Christian faith American country. I performed an analysis by examining whether Dr. Martin Luther King would be considered in the TM framework as a traditional or modern man. In the exercise, looking at his, at his strong beliefs in religion, and his charismatic leadership style, you would assume that he was traditional. But Dr. King was also very modern when it came to the characteristics of tolerance and being worldly. Dr. King studied Mahatma Gandhi in India and framed the civil rights movement itself, which is based on a very modern and revolutionary belief that all men and women are created equal. This study led to my personal theory about people, that we are all a mixture of both traditional and modern personality traits. 
I concluded the African Americans in 